Hi, welcome to Fostering Resilience. I'm Dr. KJ Foster. And yes, you did read that title correctly, and it is an accurate title in that I was just diagnosed with an uncomplicated opioid use disorder. And before anybody gets crazy, I was diagnosed with this disorder, but I do not have an uncomplicated opioid use disorder, nor do I have any other opioid use disorder or any substance use disorder for that matter, at least not currently. I did in my past have a, a substance use disorder regarding alcohol. So I did experience an addiction to alcohol, but it's been over 12 years now, but I was just recently diagnosed. And so this video is really a public service announcement because I want you to know what happened so that you can make sure that this does not happen to you because I believe that it's happening out there to a lot of people or with a lot of people and they don't even know that it's going on. And, and so let me share this story with you of how this happened. I recently went to the doctor for a physical. And if I really, I have to explain, I think kind of like a little bit of the details so that you understand how this all evolved. So let me just first say that about a year ago, I went to the hospital uh, late at night. I had really bad stomach pains. My stomach was bloated. I looked like I was like three months pregnant. And it was the worst pain, the worst physical pain that I had experienced since like childbirth. I mean, it was really, really intense. I'm not one, you know, to like rush to the hospital, but my husband and I went to the hospital and it was excruciating. And at first they thought it was a kidney stone, but they did these tests and they determined that it wasn't a kidney stone. It was this, and I have to look here because it's, I can't, I can never remember the name because it's sort of like a complicated name, at least to me, it's mesenteric adenitis. And the way that the doctor explained it to me is like something happens like with the lining, it's basically, uh, I think it's the result of my diet. It was the result of my diet then. And I've struggled over the last couple of years, I think with my aging and that I can't eat some things that I used to be able to eat. So I have a little bit of like an IBS issue and I have to be really careful about what I eat. And so this happened and she referred me, I never, she referred me to a specialist and I never went to the specialist because what happened is I wound up feeling better and that's what I do. When I feel better, then I'm like, oh, I don't really need to go to the specialist. So I was prescribed, when I left the hospital, I was prescribed ibuprofen, Percocet, and some other, some other medication. And so my husband went and he filled the prescriptions for me when I was home sleeping and he came home with them and we had a discussion about, because we're both in recovery, he said, well, if you need to take the Percocets, you know, take the Percocets. And I, you know, pills were never my thing. As a matter of fact, I, my stomach, because I have stomach issues, <laughs> is really sensitive to those types of medications. So I've had issues with them years and years and years ago before I ever struggled with my alcoholism. And so I was in so much pain that like I broke them in half and I had you know, a half at a time. And I think maybe I had a total of two pills. They prescribed 12 and that's it. So that's, you need to know this backstory, okay? So that happened. And then this past year, I decided, because I was having some more stomach issues, again, all related, I believe, to my diet, but I decided to go and get a physical. And so I went to the doctor and my son, my younger son, who hadn't been to the doctor in several years, probably since he started college, and he just graduated from college because he's generally very healthy and so he hasn't gone to the doctor. He decided he was going to go to the doctor to get a physical because we have new, new, we were just assigned to new primary care doctors, new insurance, all of that. So he went to the doctor about two days before I did. And when I went to the doctor, I shared with her, oh, you, you know, you just recently met with my son and told her who he was because we have different last names. And as soon as I told her, 
my son's name. And she said, oh yes, he just graduated from college, right? And I said, yes, that's him. All of a sudden her demeanor sort of changed and she started asking me questions about the Percocets. And she said, you know, I see here that you're taking Percocets. And I said, and, and how long have you been taking those? And I said, I'm not taking Percocets. I don't know what you're talking about. And it took me a minute to like remember that I had gone to the hospital and they had prescribed these Percocets. And I said, no, I'm not taking those Percocets. I said, that prescription was like a year ago and I took maybe two and that was it. And she said, well, because you know, you could have these issues relative to uh, withdrawing from opioids. I said, I'm not withdrawing from opioids. I shared with her, I said, you know, I'm um, recovered from an addiction to alcohol. I haven't had a drink or a drug in my body, in a narcotic drug in my body for over 12 years now. And she said, oh, okay. But she was just very like, <laughs> it felt like she was very suspect. So I went home and I told my son about my experience. And I said to him, did you say anything to her that would make her like sort of react that way toward me? And he said, well, I shared with her about our family history. I shared with her that you and Tony are in recovery and that, you know, my brother, you know, his experience with drug addiction and his grandmother who struggled with opioid addiction. And I said, I think maybe she got me confused with one of the other family members because she was asking me these really strange questions. And then I just didn't think anything of it. Um, I, he did say he thought that she didn't understand what it meant to be like in recovery, which is why I did that video on what it means to be in recovery, what it means to be recovered. So I didn't think anything of it until last week or the beginning of this week, I got an email one of, you know, like one o'clock in the morning, one of those nights or mornings when I was struggling to sleep. And of course, like I pick up my phone and I see this notification that my lab results were in because she sent me to go get blood work. I forgot that part. So I went to go get blood work just to check everything out and then maybe, you know, go see the specialist, but I wanted to get the blood work done before the specialist. So I went to get the blood work done and this was notifying me that the lab results were in. And so with this company, you could, there's a portal and you can sign into the portal and you can go check your results. So I signed into the portal, seeing if I could see any of the blood test results. And it showed um, in this one area, it showed the urinalysis, which was normal, but I couldn't find the, the blood test. So I did a search. I did a medical records search within the portal. And the search results, when they came back, it showed in the search results that the doctor had diagnosed me with an uncomplicated opioid use disorder. And I just about hit the ceiling when I read that because I was like, what? how, you know, how is she, I told her that I'm like, I diagnose substance use disorders on a regular basis. So I understand that sometimes there's denial involved, but that was not the case with me. I was telling her the truth. And even I noticed they posted like the questionnaire and one of the questions on the questionnaire seemed to have been changed because it was a question that asked whether I experienced sadness more than 50% of the time. And it said, yes on the questionnaire and I would have never, like anybody that knows me, like I would have never said yes to that question. And I know I didn't say yes to that question, but it said that I said yes. So I'm, you know, I, I, the one thing that I'm really proud of myself about is that I was able to self-soothe because I was really escalated at like 1.30 in the morning. And I was able to just self-soothe and, you know, think to myself, okay, KJ, there's nothing you can do about it today. But the following morning, I went with my son because my son had to pick up his, his blood test order. So we went together and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to go grab that bottle of pills that's still sitting in my cabinet that has the 10 pills left out of the 12 that I was prescribed. And so I got the bottle and I stuck it in my purse and I went to the doctor's office and I requested to speak with her when we were there. 
you know, just let me have five minutes with the doctor. And thank goodness she was available to speak with me. And so I shared with her, I said, listen, I noticed in the portal that you've diagnosed me with this substance use disorder. You've diagnosed me with this opioid use disorder. And that's wholly false. I do not have an opioid use disorder, nor do I use these Percocets, nor do I use any other opioids. And the thing is, is, you know, I, I treat substance abuse. Uh, it's not like I have a problem being diagnosed with it. I have a problem being diagnosed with something that I don't have. And so I, I started to explain to her and she was arguing with me saying, well, you know, the billers go in and they review the charts and they base, they put diagnoses in there based upon the medication you're taking. And I said, yeah, but I'm not taking that medication. And she's arguing with me saying, but it shows that you are taking the medication. I'm like, but I'm not taking the medication. I was prescribed it one time and then I pulled out the bottle and I said, here's my bottle. And it showed the date on the bottle, thank God. And I said, here's the bottle. You can count the pills. Like this is the deal. This is the situation that occurred, you know, and I do not have a substance use disorder. And then I'm explaining to her what I, what I do for a living and my career. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> this is, this is, not cool. Like this is not good for this to be on my record. You just, you clearly don't understand. So she said, okay, hold on. She took the bottle. She went and she met with her medical director. She came back and she said, well, you know, again, I just want you to understand that, you know, the reason this happened and is because the billers go in and they review the charts and, and they put the diagnosis. In. I'm like, but you asked me when I met you, with you, you asked me about my, you know, my, the use of that Percocet and I told you, so this is a really dangerous situation for these billers to be going in and just applying diagnoses to people. Like that's totally illegit, like that's not good. And so she said, well, you know, we've taken it off your chart, so don't worry about it, it's okay, I've taken it off. And so I said to her, well, you know, as, as in the conversation of emphasizing again, how the, just how like this is so wholly false that you diagnosed me with this uncomplicated opioid use disorder. She then says to me, oh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a disorder. I diagnosed you with uncomplicated opioid dependence. And I was like, but that's worse. So she like clearly did not, understand what that meant and she didn't understand the difference between opioids and benzos because she kept referring to the Percocets as benzos and I'm like they're not benzos I do not take and then she's like but you're taking that I'm like I'm not taking benzos I'm not taking opioids I'm not taking anything so my point is and she took it off the chart and then I had to call her back later to have her take off the medication that I'm taking the medication remove that from the chart so so this is my point here my point is is that this could be happening and you have no idea so number one is get the records from your doctor make sure you know what they're diagnosing you with because i think that this is like a whole insurance thing you know they need to get paid by the insurance company and i get that like i work in the field like i get it but you can't be diagnosing people with things they don't have and even like i feel like i feel like maybe somebody changed that answer on, on my form quite honestly but i'm you know i I'm letting that go because quite honestly, it scares me a little bit to get, you know, whenever it comes to insurance and there's big money involved and like, I don't want to, I don't want to make that many waves. I want to make sure that my chart is correct and that nobody's diagnosing me with things I don't have. So check your medical records, make sure your doctor is not diagnosing you with things that you do not have. And also be your own advocate. If they've diagnosed you with something that's not correct, go and confront the, the doctor, the, the office, but do it respectfully. I didn't, I didn't raise my voice. I was very calm. I didn't get all upset because when, when we do that, like if I did that, that would just make matters worse. And 
oftentimes then people don't want to help you and they won't they, they have a hard time like hearing what you're trying to communicate so i was very calm i was very respectful and i think that i got positive results because of that so be your own own advocate but be respectful and another thing if you're somebody who does have a substance use disorder or you're in early recovery meaning you know the first two years of recovery, if you're in early recovery and you're ta you are taking some medications or you're getting out of treatment and you need to get you know, a refill or a prescription for medications, make sure that you are going to a specialist, somebody who knows about addiction, who knows about addiction recovery. And so the best person would be somebody who's called an uh, addictionologist because they really know. But don't just assume that you know somebody's name got like if you got a referral from someone if somebody's giving you a referral and they say listen i know this doctor this psychiatrist this md whoever it is this therapist even for that matter they're good they they're experienced with substance abuse with addiction recovery they know what they're talking about because so many people Doctors included, medical doctors, I'm a PhD, so my specialty is in counselor education. So doctors, medical doctors, psychiatrists, who you think should know these things often do not. They are, I, I think they take maybe one class in, in substance abuse and that's it. So um, at least that's how it used to be. So do be careful, be your own advocate, be careful, the best um, the best way to go about finding a doctor is through a referral, but if you can't, definitely question the doctor and make sure that they are educated in the area of substance abuse if that's something that you're dealing with. Because even if it's a therapist, I went to a therapist once when I was in early recovery and I told him multiple times that I was recovering from an addiction to alcohol. This was very early in my first two years. And in the middle of me sharing with him a stressful event that I had experienced after a couple of sessions with him, his advice to me was to go home and have a glass of wine and try to relax. Like, I kid you not, <laughs> this is what this person said. So whether it's a therapist, counselor, MD, psychiatrist, get a referral if you can, or just do whatever you can to research and make sure that they are experienced in what they say they're experienced in. That's my PSA. Hopefully you were able to benefit from it. If um, you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, click on the red subscribe button below. And when the bell pops up, if you click on the bell, you'll be alerted to all of my upcoming videos. I hope you have a very beautiful and a blessed week. And I hope you'll join me back here again next week. Namaste.